Hello everyone, uh, this is going to be just a, a quote-unquote quick ad hoc stream. We'll see how long I go. I've got one Mountain Dew's worth of energy in me, so we're going to go for one Mountain Dew's worth of time. Um, I've gotten my UI test library to the point where it's fairly functional. So what does that mean? Let's take a look. Um, my plan for tonight is to actually see about pulling it out and um, building it into its own uh, NuGet package and repository and all that jazz. So that's the game plan. Get this thing out of the material design thing and into its own NuGet package. That way it's no longer on my fork and we can reference it and bring it in and everyone's happy. So first off, the proof is in the pudding, as it were. Um, we are going to pick on our UI tests project here. So I have removed all of the previous Appium tests. I have removed Appium. It is no longer a part of this project. So just to be clear, Selenium, Appium are completely removed from this. Pretty sure I removed it from here too. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Trust me, that'll be one thing we clean up here in a moment. Okay, so we've got three tests there. Don't make a liar out of me should just work and hopefully this looks as cool as it did last night because it looked pretty cool last night thinking thinking I just rebased on master so this might take it a moment well it recompiles the universe okay so fires boom 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 flashy screens and all the tests pass <laughs> Feels good, feels really good. So, these tests are similar to the ones uh, for people who've watched my prior streams um, on doing UI tests with Appium. Uh, these ones are the equivalent tests written in uh, my new framework. So, a simple test on button, making sure we can retrieve back the theme color and that the backgrounds match. Great. Uh, simple list box test, uh, demonstrating mouse cursor uh, implementation for replacing the mouse cursor or putting the mouse cursor over a list box item and verifying that the um, opacity changes. Again, these tests are not UI tests per se. These are basically unit tests for the XAML, I think is the better way to phrase it. Is This is unit testing your XAML because changing up like your visual tree templates will break these tests. UI tests will be a lot more forgiving. Um, but this is because this library consists primarily of XAML and it bothers me that I can't have any unit tests over my XAML. And UI tests are not sufficient for testing things in the visual tree. So, given, the, given that requirement, uh, the dialog host test, which was the more interesting clicky clicky one, um, does a bunch of clicking, pops things visible. Um, this is actually written a little wrong for this framework, right? Is this is testing the interaction to, to determine behavior. And I don't need to do that anymore. I can just go straight and um, just test things in the visual tree. So this test probably needs to get rewritten um, to be a little more exact. This was built when all we had to work with was um, Appium level integration. Um, but this test is in and works. So yay. That's exciting. Um, so there's all of that. So. Uh, cool key differences and things that um, I got working. So on my stream with where Kenny joined me, we got the uh, implementation working where it was able to actually load the XAML up and display it. So I then took that a few steps further. So the key part is this load XAML method and what it's doing. So there's some, there's some extension methods with some hard-coded stuff in here, right? So this is just hard-coded and this this I'm going to leave. So I very intentionally have moved, and I think i got to review some of these methods, um, but I tried to pull extension methods that were going to be specific to material design out of the, the base library and up here um, so that uh, these can easily be leveraged here, but they don't necessarily need to be part of the base package. right? Um, theoretically, somebody else could use these in their library. Don't really know who. Um, again, this is this type of testing I don't think applies to application level de developers, only realistically um, library developers. So, 
Bear in mind, I, I do think that this is a very um, niche uh, project. So, uh, initializes the assembly or the application with material design. Because remember, the, the VT test project is also, in addition to being a library, it's just a straight up WPF app that doesn't do anything. It doesn't even have a window, it just starts, it just hangs out there and waits for you to make this call to load up its application level stuff. And then, boop, 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 go jump back into the load XAML because apparently I got rid of it. Uh, and then we call create window. Uh, again, another extension method, very much hard coded to material design. But then it's got some window XAML that it goes and generates up, creates that window inside of that demo app, kicks back the elements, and we're off to the races. So all of this then goes in and works. Booyah. So that's what we are going for. So there's going to be, I think I'm going to start with doing some API review and cleanup of this, and then we're going to move it over. And if I'm still feeling motivated, I'd really love to play around with GitHub Actions. Haven't done it before, so it'll be a learning experience. You guys can watch me struggle and cry as I try to figure them out. They don't look bad. I, I took a brief glance at some of the YAML and samples people have. They look pretty straightforward. So we'll see. We shall see. Um, the easy case, the easy demo case is always simple until you s want to customize things. Um, the other thing I did have to do is I went through and disabled um, parallel test execution uh, with XUnit because that's bad. When you're doing UI tests, you don't want things running in parallel. Um, Appium does some fancy stuff where they keep track of some state and this and that. Um, for now, I'm not doing any of that. So. Okay, so step one, I noticed Appium was still in here, so let's whack it, uh, because Appium should not be needed for any of this. So let's go ahead and build this guy up. Uh, okay, so we've already got, already got some failures. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. Don't think those are being used anywhere. Um, I also did pull in uh, the p invoke library uh, because this guy now needs to go, because I'm throwing away Appium, I need to do low level stuff for interaction. Ultimately, we're going to get to keyboard input with like send keys level stuff. Um, this is all I needed for now. But uh, rather than doing all of my p invokes myself, I just pulled in the NuGet package. It's a little overkill, it works. Somebody else then can do the p invokes, and I don't have to think too hard. I just have to look up what all of these methods do. Okay, so that handled that. Newton soft. What? Why do we have Newton soft in this? Don't know. That's simple. Um, and these color mixins. I'm almost tempted to yank these color mixins out. Well, we'll leave them here for now. Um, only because I'm, I'm somewhat tempted to think that these might be useful inside of the material design library directly. We've got a lot of color helpers to do fancy stuff, um, especially calculating the contrast ratio with the relative luminance. I think that would be helpful. Yeah, we'll see. We'll leave. We'll leave it here for now. We'll leave it here for now. Okay. So there's that. There's a couple. There's a couple more APIs that I know that are in here that are ugly that I'd like to kind of, kind of have a first pass at. Okay. So what are you, what are you complaining about now? You somehow lost. Oh, because those were probably coming in indirectly via Appium. Got it. So. And this is something I may end up going back and revisiting at some point too, because this is reliant on Windows Forms. Okay, so how do we want to go about doing this? All of this just because I want to go. I almost wonder if I go and look up BitBlit. Let's take a quick, because there's another way of doing this. There's a low-level method I haven't used in a very long time, but I know it exists. 
It's highly performant, very fast. Uh, Bitbillet WPF. Make this a little bigger. Uh, yeah, it's clearly I've used this before. Um, and I'd love to not not have to deal with some of this and I thought I could just do something with like a writable bitmap where you lock the pixels get the pointer to the buffer and just dump it over something 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 I'm trying to remember if I've done this on another project where I can just go and steal the code um, because we could just pull in Windows Forms but yuck yuck uh, So bitblit function, picture bots creates graphics. Yeah, the problem with this is these are WinForms calls. Those are WinForms calls. And if I'm going to use WinForms, I don't need to go all the way down to this. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. What are you doing? See, this is still... Let's see here. WinForms application, great. WPF, native Windows. This is what we're talking about. Hey, that looks kind of cool. That looks kind of like what we're wanting, except for I'm noticing a few things. This is still reliant on bitmap. This is still reliant on bitmap and graphics. What do the graphics get used for? Oh, yuck. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Uh, dependencies. Uh, so if those were coming in via Appium, let's just go look at how the Appium references it because I assume I'm hoping I'm hoping it's in a nice easy spot uh, let's see we would have been on this side Selenium support we would have landed here That isn't it. That isn't it. Um, I looked at web driver with support. System drawing common. This is probably what we want. Oh yeah, look at that. System drawing, graphics, bitmap, etc, etc, etc. Okay. This will do. Let's see. Uh, Manage nougats. Manage the nougats. Let's grab. Come on. Paste. Okay. Don't know why paste is a hard operation. Uh, system drawing common. Okay. Install. Boom. All of you now work. Everyone's happy. Might revisit the BitBlit at some point. It's significantly faster. Um, this works. This is, and it's only, this is only um, realistically being triggered um, at the point where uh, we're capturing a, an image of something, typically our window. Um, and this usually is only going to be triggered in a failed test case. So it's not, it's not overly, doesn't need to be overly performant. Okay, so we're back into compiling state, I assume. Build succeeded, great. Okay, so let's start with this. So I don't know, find all references, you're unused. Find all references, you're unused, perfect. Whack this class. Oh, boy, that's loud. 
I also just realized apparently I never plugged my headphones in. Let's fix that. Knew something felt a little off of that. Okay. There. Hey, look at that. Okay, so there's that, there's that. Okay, so we've got a few other things. Your public, that's fine. Interfaces are fine. Internal should all be hidden. Position is fine. This is our program. It's internal, so no one can get to it. Really don't need this. You no longer need to be async void. Let's see, let's turn on warnings real quick. And then, uh, let's see. Uh, that guy doesn't have a strong name. Possible no reference return. This we're just going to disable because there is there is no possibility of dealing with that. At least as far as I'm aware. Let's see. Visual Tree Service. You should be internal. Uh, let's see, we're going to leave you, well, hold on. So this has a bunch of, so some of these things should stay and some of these things should go. So this, create window with user control, boom, 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 boom. These both need to move out into the material design project extensions, VT mixins, boom. So this guy can stay here. Sure. Probably need to look at a name for this. Your internal. That's great. I think I can even, well, no, you're used by the service. It's going to nest it a little deeper, but that's fine. Uh, you should go into your own, own bit. I did roll a bit of my own uh, weight class. Uh, here with this retry object um, just because retry is hard I thought about pulling in something like maybe a poly but for the the retry that I wanted was basically um, a minimum number of times or a timeout right like I'm gonna try at least three times um, or more if I have time right and so three tries over two seconds see how that does. Uh, let's see, this can be cleaned up into an expression body, great. Uh, let's see, program position, test. So this, this thing I'm not overly fond of. Um, and I think, because just calling this thing test is not exactly an intuitive name. Um, we've basically got start app, connect to app. So in general, neither of these necessarily need to be invoked directly, right? So what ends up happening in the test base is we just call directly in. Kind of thinking. We change the names of some of these because I'm thinking rather than start app, connect to app, um, I think I want to call this start remote app to indicate we are doing there. Uh, connect to app sort of indicates that there is a remote public start service. This is only called internally, I believe. Yeah, so this guy here should go internal. Clean that up a little bit. Um, I could see an argument where somebody might want that public. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, Wondering if it makes sense to do something because do you really need? 
connect if start is going to do this. Um, so public static class app. Because I'm sort of thinking that this guy here goes like this. And we just drop that off, right? Uh, and then this guy, because I don't think, so connect, yeah, so these uh, are pretty much all unused. Um, which I think it, what we're going to do is public class server because I, I don't want to get rid of these just yet because these are still useful. Uh, let's see. So you come up here, right? You come here, you come here, you become a start, and everyone's happy. Static class client, and we do that. So, a few errors likely around that. So, I think what we do is server dot, and this guy here is now going to be unhappy, but what we can do is internal, right? It's ultimately what we're returning. Because there is a subtle difference here, right? So there's app and managed app, and I should probably separate these into two, two classes. Um, managed app is we're going to start ourselves and allow um, the test to effectively just configure us really quick, right? Uh, uh, and the only real difference between this and the other one is because we start the process, we're terminating it when we get cleaned up, right? Whereas the base one... Uh, it's disposed method isn't even doing anything, right? He's just pretty much hanging out for the moment. Um, I know disposable pattern should really be implemented correctly, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but he's just here to basically supply all of these. But the difference is, is he's sort of ignorant about processes. He doesn't care, right? Because ultimately he got attached to an existing process that we aren't managing. So server... Boom. Okay, so we're going to just start breaking you guys. Move to app. Uh, move to server. Uh, rename. What? Uh, let's see, where are you? Boom. So we'll just rename you to client. Poof. Okay, so that cleans up that API. Make sure we're still building. Of course we aren't. Let's see, this guy got moved, so that's fine because this is over in the unit test project. Uh, let's see, now we're up here. Test doesn't exist. Uh, server. Uh, oh, we're gonna have to fully qualify this, right? VT test. Uh, is that not what are you squawking about? Oh, VT test. There we go. It's important to get sp spelling counts. Spelling counts. Least consistently. Uh, let's see here. Server. Uh, start. Is that what we called it? Boom. And then the last one. Uh, client 
No, it was app. Start remote. Uh, let's see. VT tests. Something like that. Uh, let's see here. And I think, I think we can actually drop this because this is optional now. Boom. Perfect. Build succeeded. Let's just make sure we haven't broken anything. Rerun all tests. Perfect. Couldn't have broken too much. Everything still runs. Okay, so uh, let's see here. That's all fine. That's all fine. Clean up the white space. Okay, so we're going to check this in uh, real quick. Uh, that is not. We want to be here. Uh, let's see. So cleanup of VT tests uh, library. Commit. Sure, we'll push it. We'll push it just for uh, funsies, even though we're about to pull it out. Okay, so the next part is we want to take this guy and move it. Uh, and so specifically, we want to go and put it in a new project. Now, there's going to be a couple things happening here. So I think what I'm going to do is just call it XAML test. I couldn't come up with a good name. And this at least has... So when I check NuGet for like XAML test, come up with nothing. Great, it's unused. We punch it into being XAML test. Not a lot of conflicting overlap. And it was clearly available on GitHub. So we're going with it for no other reason than that. So uh, we are going to we are going to move it. So this is going to be big and ugly, and we're going to do it anyway. Uh, let's see. Clone repo, GitHub. Uh, XAML test, right? And then we're gonna we're gonna move all of the code. Yeah, go ahead and open it. And this is pretty much a fresh repo. I gave it a name. I told it to initialize with an MIT license, and I don't think I checked anything else. That was pretty much the uh, the entire extent of what I've done so far, which is pretty much nothing. Okay. So let's start with this. So open containing folder. So I'm going to just lift and shift. Grab that. Just going to do this on a separate screen real quick. You're going to trust me. Paste. Okay. So we've got we've got our code shifted. Simple. Done, right? Uh, let's see. So we're going to fire this guy. If I just... I think if I double click the CS proj, it'll let me do this. And then I believe we can have it gen me up a solution. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. So we are going to call this XAML test. And we are going to put it at the root. Great. Okay, so we got to do a bunch of stuff. So step one, we are going to replace everywhere where we see VT tests with XAML tests. Now, I could go through and do this inside of Visual Studio. However, Visual Studio has trouble renaming itself. So what we are going to do instead, uh, we're going to come over here, and I believe... Open with VS Code, because VS Code is great for this. And I'm just going to close this other solution down for the moment while we're doing it. So uh, let's see, be bigger font. Uh, why am I not seeing Karnak running? It claims it's running. Let's restart it. Go. 
Go, go, Karnak. You can do it. There we go. Okay, so let's do this. So we will search for VT test, right? And we are going to replace it with XAML test, singular. Uh, replace all. 429 occurrences. That sounds good to me. Okay, so that'll cover almost all of them, I think. And then if we come in here, we need to change this to XAML test. Test singular. Uh, and then I think this guy will need to be XAML. What are, hold on, what are you? What class are you? Oh, you are the. We're going to leave you because you didn't get renamed internally because it didn't have the S on the end. We're going to ignore that for the moment. So we'll test because we'll fix it when we get this guy fired back up. Uh, let's see here. XAML test. Now, in general, I would usually tell people if you know you're going to pull something out later, don't put it inside another project and then do this pull it out rename garbage. This is a mess. It's ugly. Waste of time. Um, but I wasn't 100% confident I was going to do this. So, self inflicted wound. Oh, look at that. Visual Studio update available. Great. Uh, hold up. Hold up. Close. That is not Visual Studio Preview. We want the newest stuff. I was going to say, I normally keep it up to date. I've been keeping the preview up to date and haven't been running the regular one. Okay. Okay, so this guy down here is the the kicker. So I think what we're going to do is uh, what do we call this thing? It's just used to as an attached property to slap IDs on stuff so I can keep track of them. I'm not entirely sure I actually even need it. Specifically the get ID. Because the ID gets slapped into this cache. Does get ID get used anywhere else? Uh, not the time to change it. Not the time to change it. Um, so let's just rename it to... Because all it holds is an is an internal ID. How about rather than VT test, we call it uh, and then see object tracker. That's a nice long name. And I'm going to move you inside the internal namespace and change you to there. There, that'll that'll clean that up. That'll clean that up. Okay, so we've clearly got way too much stuff here. So the other thing that I'm noticing is I do not have a git ignore. So Windows Terminal, C Dev, uh, XAML, test dot net. It's dot net ignore. Oh, what is the? There's a global tool. Hang on, we're gonna we're gonna get this right. Uh, .NET global tool git ignore. Uh, yeah, this thing. Download git ignore. .NET ignore. So it's .NET hyphen ignore. 
okay, so we don't have it installed yet. Well, that's an easy fix. That is an easy fix. Boom. .net. Uh, ignore list. Great. There's going to be something around the C range. Uh, nothing in C, so how about .net? So maybe D. Oh, come on. Where's the dot netty one? Am I just missing it? Swift text turbo. Oh, Visual Studio. Oh, hey, Magnus. Thank you. I think I just came across that. Perfect. Uh, so let's see. So dot net. Uh, what is the... Ignore, get, yeah, I pretty much, oh, so the one right in front of me, if I had kept reading. Right. Dot net ignore, pull that guy in. Uh, name Visual Studio ignore is not correct. Uh, oh, I think, there we go, sweet, now, we look at this, 36, much better, okay, so, that gives me a bunch of that, so, uh, so check-in of the app. Yeah, I usually go to um, what is it? The what? A, uh, get ignored. There's a website that where you um, that the, that backs this that actually generates the get ignores. It might, uh, I'm trying to remember where it is. Um, it looks like this guy is probably what's backing that other one, um, which I'm guessing when you say you copy and paste from GitHub, it's likely in here. So. It's one of those useful little tools that I saw one of my coworkers use one day and went, ah, I need to remember that, and clearly have not remembered it. Okay, so there's all that. Yeah, check-in of the library. Commit changes. Yeah, sure, we'll push it. Okay, so if anybody is interested so this is now this is now the new library new new happy home uh, so let's go through at some point we need to add a unit test project here but I'm more interested in learning github actions nougat so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is a fairly straightforward one but I again I have not done this at all, so this is a learning. Uh, let's see, heaps of communities, uh, creating a new workflow. So, do I need to turn something on in here? I'm trying to remember how to set this up and uh, that runs on push, which is what we want. Thought I came across one before. Yeah, um, this is this is similar to what I saw. It's something something akin to this. Name pack. Building the package, signing the package, publish the nuget package. Great. This sounds wonderful. Uh, I thought there was a whole list of these things where publish NuGet. Hey, look, a GitHub action. This is what I was looking for. So default release. Yeah. 
So this is what I want. Now, if I recall correctly, explore GitHub Actions. Great. I thought there was a, I believe you just put the YAML file inside of a dot GitHub folder, if I remember right. Uh, set up NuGet exe. I yeah, this is where we were just were at. That's fine. I sort of want to find GitHub Actions Docs. I just there we go. About GitHub Actions. Okay, getting started. That sounds like what I want. Uh, core concepts, sure. Uh, I guess we'll start here. About uh, usage limits, job execution times. This is fine. We're going to be nowhere near any of the limits. Yeah, sure, great. Uh, core concepts, action, artifacts, CI, event. Yeah, most of the stuff lines right up with the Azure DevOps workflow. Uh, starting with pre-configured workflow template. That sounds like what I want. Yes, this this is what I think I came across earlier. Ha ha ha. Pre-can templates. Can now. Is there can has NuGet package AWS Azure Docker image .NET Core Ooh .NET Core desktop that sounds like what I want. Uh, what do you do? Branches uh, configuration runs on Windows latest. Your solution name test project. Uh, WAP project directory. Okay, so we might have to create the test project just to make this guy happy. Install .NET Core, set up MS Build, uh, duh, 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 add MS Build to the path. I don't know if I actually need any of this because this is going to build an AppX and I do not want an AppX. So how about just straight up .NET Core? What do you do? Oh, yeah. See, this looks simple, right? I want I want something that looks like this. This this looks like what I want to start with. Uh, so, adding your first template. So, actions, set up workflow. Okay? So, we will go back to here, actions, and, oh, .NET Core, set up workflow. Oh. Oh, this is even easier than I... Oh, this is... Oh, you guys have made this way too easy. Okay, so you did that. Ubuntu latest. I think we're going to change this because the fact that I am relying on some pinvoke Win32 libraries, I'm, I'm thinking I want to be on Windows. Thinking that Linux be no, no bueno. Okay. Uh, sure. .NET Restore, .NET Build, and we're just going to whack the .NET test for now. Well, I guess we don't need to. What does .NET Test do? .NET Test, no restore. Yeah, sure. What do you do if there's no test? You do nothing. Perfect. That's kind of what I want. Uh, cool. So we'll start there. Uh, commit directly. Commit new file. Yeah. So it goes underneath a got dot GitHub directory, and I don't know if that actually triggers. Is there a way to make it? Is there a way I can kick it? Um, branch status event. Okay, that seems fine. So now if I want to do nougat -y stuff. So this is where, okay, so he started there. .NET build. 
uh, boom. So this is this is where we go to the marketplace, right? And we we bring in this. This is the guy. Name, build pack, publish. Steps, blah, blah, blah. This is a slightly different one than what was used before, but I think this is fine. I'm wondering if there is... Yeah, it's a reasonable layout here. I think I just do this. Project file path. And I copy all of you in. Uh, okay, so step one, I would like to pull my own repository. And then back in my project, I would like to add a new solution item. Do, 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 existing item. And I would like to grab the GitHub workflow. Okay. I assume that's right. It generated that for me. I'm just going to assume it does the right thing. Paste. Uh, okay. So you are... I've been using using VS Code too much. My keyboard shortcuts are all off. Okay, indentation. Publish on version change. Sure. What? Where does the version come from? Uh, let's see. So this will be sample test. XAML test.csproj, and I am going to have to specify something. Uh, oh, so it is looking for version inside of here. Got it. Okay, so I got to get, I got to make sure my .NET pack is working correctly then. Uh, so static version, tag commit. Ooh, that sounds like something I'd like. Turn that off. Uh, format of the git tag. Yeah, that works. Uh, API key. So we are going to need a NuGet API key. And I need to figure out how to specify the secrets for this thing. Because we are not just going to hard code it in here. That would be bad. Uh, to say it flag to turn off. Why is it off by default? I feel like I want that on. Okay. So without an without this, this should still work. So let's try this. Uh, so adding nuget publish step, and I kind of just want to see it run. Because that is a push onto master, so it should trigger and run. Thinking that will do it. Bum, bum, bum. Where does one see? Ah, look at that. It's queued up. It's going to do a thing. It's going to hopefully make stuff, create status badge. That looks like the right idea. So cool. So we'll add that in. We'll add that in. That'll be our next next thing that we add. So add existing item. Grab me the README. Right. Boom. Change this guy up. So rather than it saying .NET Core, how about build? Maybe. Sure. Uh, great. One Q job. Are you running? Starting your workflow run. Hello. Go, OctoKitty. Go. I believe in you. Become a real cat. Run the build. Run the build. I'm impatient. Come on. Come on. Don't make me regret not going to DevOps. 
You're supposed to be cool and awesome, and I'm hoping that you are. So be cool and awesome for me. Pretty please. Okay, well that's well that's thinking about what it's done. Let's come in here. So uh, let's see. So CD XAML test, All right? So we need to do .NET pack. Uh, let's see, so we have build problems to begin with. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's start with this, .NET build. Uh, why do you have build errors? When this guy compiled just fine inside of Visual Studio. Oh, you didn't. Oh, well, if you didn't compile fine inside of here, ah, caused a problem and I didn't even know it. Uh, system windows window. Uh, let's I guess fully qualifying each of these. That's just, mm, no, we're doing this up here. Uh, using window gets system Windows window, All right? I don't want to specify that a whole bunch of times. That feels wasteful. Where did that other one go? Come here. Uh, discard hunk. Okay, so aside from the fact that I caused a build error, Let's go back here. So, .NET build. Let's just verify that that much works. Mm, could not copy file. I'm going to go with that's probably Visual Studio holding on to something. Beginning retry. Hold on. Why is this thing... Oh, hold up, hold up. I bet you I know what I did wrong. I bet you I know what I did wrong. I think this thing has a, a copy step. I think I left that in. So one of the things that it that this library does need to do um, so that the to make it easy for the unit test project or the UI test project to leverage it, yeah, it was just hard coded to copy to a directory. Yeah, that's that's a problem. That is a problem that off of there. Try build again. Look at that. Look at that. Easy, easy mode. So, .NET pack and it hopefully just works. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That is what we want. So, we need to likely do some change-ups with this wonderful oh it generated that folder for me great uh, let's see so where is the sorry what was the path on that oh bin debug so that'll be a problem but that's that's fine so let's take a look at this NuGet package okay so it built this out net core app 3.1 that's fine. We expect it there. We can see about source link in a minute. We've got our dependencies laid out. Those pretty much look like what I would expect. So the now the issue being we got to change up some stuff here. Property group. And we got to change. So let's see. Version 0.0.1. .0 Right, we're gonna we're gonna start from a low version. Uh, let's see. Author. I'm not sure what did I what did I put on some of my other stuff. Should probably be consistent. Let's look. Let's look. What did I put on some of my other libraries? Uh, like AutoDI. All right. What is what are you what are you decked out with? I know you're using. Oh, 
oh wait, you're inside of here. Because you use full new specs. So we'll just do that. Uh, let's see, I believe I should be able to find, ba -ba -ba. close some of these things up. We don't need all this anymore. Uh, .NET pack property group. Show me, show me what all the thingies are. Yeah, don't care, don't care. More interested in the project properties. Global properties, are you gonna show it to me? Not quite what I'm after. Uh, additions to the CS Proj. Target frameworks, yeah, that's great. Where is, okay. Uh, this is what I'm looking for. So uh, the default value is true. Package version. Uh, default is the value of version. That is the property of version in the project. Okay, great. Package ID. Uh, result in the assembly name, which is what we want. Great. Uh, title. There we go. See, this is what I was looking for. So, title, uh, XAML UI testing library. Sure. Great. Authors. Great. Uh, package description. Uh, stop yelling. Package description, a library that allows unit tests to be written against uh, WPF XAML. Sure, that sounds great. Uh, actually, if we just use description rather than package description, that works better, apparently. Okay, to do, do, do copyright. Did I need to specify one or did it just default? Didn't, Ugh, yuck. I don't know. Uh, copyright. Uh, I don't know what to, what did I specify in my other library? I haven't done this in such a long time. I think, yeah, I'll we'll just, whatever. Uh, let's see, 20, nope, nope. Numlock is clearly off. Uh, there we go. Okay, back here. Default is false. Uh, blah, 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 don't care, package license file, uh, package license expression, this we do want to use. Um, I remember having to update to support this. Uh, what is, uh, what are the values for this? Because uh, you can do something like MIT or similar, an SPS license identifier. Yeah, where's like MIT license? Uh, MIT license, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. So, boom, uh, let's see. Package license expression, boom, MIT license. Something like that. Okay, package license expression, license file, great, 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 you're fine. Release notes, tags, icons, eh, that's later. Include symbols, I believe the answer is yes. I think, I think we might go as far as, as making sure, uh, let's see, yeah, so true, great. Symbol pack format, uh, 
Uh, buh, buh, buh. Uh, if uh, s nuget package, so we want that. So we're just going to use the latest and greatest on everything, All right? So s uh, pkg, I believe, is what it said. S new package, great. Then it will create one for me. Include source, no, we are not a tool. Repository URL, that's important. And we are going to give it our new, why are you still thinking? I have no idea why that's so slow. 12 minutes ago, one queued job. Still queued, huh? Okay. That does not instill me with confidence. Uh, let's see. I guess we can do repository branch too, I guess. Uh, I don't know. There, that might change. Let's not mess with that at the moment. Um, in client version, lots of stuff, lots of stuff, lots of stuff, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Okay. So there's all of that. So now I'm going to whack that and go back to our terminal and pack it again. Uh, cannot be parsed successfully. Okay, is it just straight up MIT? Uh, let's just try straight up MIT. Uh, do, 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 try again. Sweet! Look at that, look at that! Nougat package is made easy. Uh, compiler flags. Uh, with a new enough compiler. What? Uh, 314 preview SDK. Dot, dot net list SDKs. Yes. Well, regardless, I'm not going to stress too much about it because this is going to be done on the pipeline. Let's see. License is there. Copyright. Dependencies. Framework references. Everything's let up. Sweet, 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 sweet. Okay. So the fun part with this is this Nougat package isn't going to work. So because you'll note it packaged up XAML test DLL and the runtime config. Which is great, except for that's not enough. So we need it to also package up the XE. That is a requirement so that we can actually have something to start. Uh, what are you unhappy about? Uh, reload project. Well, you packed and built, so I can't imagine you're that far out of base. Okay, so because you'll note this guy is actually outputting an XE, and unfortunately .NET Pack is going to ignore that. So we there is a way to specify this. I don't remember what it is. Uh, let's see. Well, let's uh, first pass at changes for NuGet. Commit, push. Maybe we can, maybe we can kick this thing into gear. Cause I'd I'd like to see it run successfully. Uh, let's see. So I think what we're gonna do is cancel. These things are queued, and it makes me wonder. Oh, this one says in progress now. Ah, oh, there we go. See, that was easy. So it does the checkout, sets up .NET Core, okay, straightforward. 
I'm very confident it's not actually going to publish anywhere publicly, given that I've given it no permissions to do so yet. Oh, goody. It's already set up to email me. That's exciting. That is thrilling to death. I was really hoping to get more email. Said no developer ever. Okay, so you go ahead and set up and run. Uh, while you're thinking about that, I want to go off and we're going to just do a quick, I'm going to let that sit there and run. Uh, .NET pack food file. Uh, do, do, do. There's some way to tell it to include it. There. This is the solution. You just have to reference the thing. Uh, found the solutions here and here. The only thing I don't like about this solution is it's going to also add it to the um, Solution Explorer. doesn't leave me with a lot of warm fuzzy feelings. Uh, noticed you are using names pipes for transport of gRPC, slightly off topic, but if time later maybe you'd like to elaborate on the reason for this. I would be happy to while this is running. So uh, for those people who might be unfamiliar with gRPC, uh, Google uh, released a serialization library called Protocol Buffers. Uh, it's binary level serialization, wicked fast. Um, like absolutely insanely fast. Um, they get a lot of their performance because they are able to um, effectively be very strict about the specification of the payload. Um, and so they can do compression and all kinds of other fancy jazz. All right, so um, great library. Um, gRPC is built on top of protocol buffers. Uh, and gRPC um, is set up to handle... Uh, more the transport communication stuff. So the the key bits that you get with um, gRPC is I write something like this uh, protocol um, file or this proto file and it generates me out a server and a client. So I tell it what do I want my API to look like and it goes and generates all the code that I need. Um, on the server side obviously what you end up with is a abstract base class so this protocol base, because obviously when the method gets invoked, um, it doesn't know what to do. So for example, get main window, right? Um, the default implementation is just going to throw. Um, and so then you derive from this class and go through and I am then in charge of get main window, right? Which is perfect. That's that's what you want to work with. Um, the The key thing here, though, is... All I had to do was effectively implement the the important details, and I don't have to think about stuff going back and forth. Um, I should probably deal with handling cancellation um, via the context and whatnot. Um, but I didn't have to think about building up asynchronous calls and servers and clients. It just generated all of that for me. For this project, um, the even though the serialization is protocol buffered, the question is still, once it serializes that data, and I've got the ones and zeros, how to transmit that back and forth. Um, the advantage of named pipes uh, inside of Windows is that I don't have to deal with um, effectively going against the networking stack. So I don't have to worry about firewalls or somebody accidentally blocking something. Right. So um, going over named pipes uh, means that I did have to take some dependencies on newer libraries. So the gRPC over named pipes requires .NET Core 3.1, which means I'm never going to run this on uh, .NET Framework. I don't remember all of the reasons, but something about some of the stuff in Framework is just not there for what they need. Um, so, but for, for our purposes, because this is basically being a purpose-built library for material design and XAML, 
I'm not overly concerned about um, uh, testing both the .NET Framework and .NET Core because I've never had a bug that was because of one framework or the other. Right. So I'm just going to test Core and assume that if Core passes, Framework's just fine, which should handle most cases. So that's that's the only reason I structured it. Um, there's a whole bunch. Uh, so the, the generalized term for doing this is remoting. And there's a lot of different ways you can go about remoting inside of C Sharp. Um, this just happened to be the one that I thought would be easiest and fastest to get up and running with. And so that's what I went with. Um, because it generates a lot of the code for you. And you can focus on what's important rather than focusing on trying to get that communications pipe to go back and forth. So that was the rationale on, on why I did it, Magnus, for right, wrong, or indifferent. Would not be opposed to changing it to something different. It just, this was really convenient um, for spinning something up. And named pipes were convenient for not having to deal with the networking stack. Because no one likes dealing with firewalls and stuff getting blocked on you. And this thing can probably get cleaned up more. Okay, so the short version, this guy built post-job cleanup, publish on version change, found new version, warning NuGet key get not given. So what would be really cool is I saw this thing had a list of like artifacty stuff. Artifacts, no artifacts generated. It'd be really cool if it would dump the artifacts right here. That would make me happy. So obviously I need to give a NuGet key, and I believe if my memory is serving me correctly, um, NuGet doesn't allow you to publish the first time via the key. You have to go through the website for the first one, I, if I remember correctly. That could have been something that's changed recently, but there's that. So and if we jump back here, I should see, huzzah! Well, that still says .NET Core. Oh, well. Worry about changing the name later, because um, it would be nice to change that. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so there's that. Uh, what we were then interested in is actually including the the exe as part of it. So, including content and package. Uh, let's see. Nice. Looking to replace .NET remoting process to process on the same machine. We're moving uh, from Net Framework to Net Five. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you're going all the way to net five, uh, cause if you want to do gRPC over name pipes, you need at least net core three, one that I can tell you for sure. Um, and yeah, if you've got some sort of fun remoting situation, it, it is a convenient way, especially if you control both sides. Uh, the one thing I would say is do be careful, um, on whatever name you put to your pipe, uh, because those things are system level. Um, and so occasionally you can uh, shoot yourself in the foot a little bit if you either pick a name that's already being used by some other application or more likely um, if like your application ends up stepping on itself. So the way I ended up working around that, duh, duh, which is hopefully now obvious. So uh, this guy here, process ID, so you'll note I've got the, the prefix that I'm using here, uh, which is just um, my type name plus the word communication pipe. And then I am tacking on my process ID just to make sure that if my um, stuff is run multiple times, each uh, app that's running will get a unique uh, name for its pipe. And that way I have an easy way of looking it up too. I like using the process ID um, as part of my key, just so that um, if I ever need to know what that is from outside, I can I can derive it. So that's just my rationale there. On other projects, I've literally made this leading bit like a, a well-known GUID, and then just tacked process ID onto it. It all that matters is that the client and server have to know what that name is. So as long as there's a a reasonable way of doing it, and you don't change it, everyone's happy. Okay, packaging stuff up. I was sort of ha hoping to avoid doing something like this because I was kind of hoping 
Uh, instead, contents, uh, content target folders, because uh, this including content in packages. I did not want to include content per se. Uh, project to project references. That's great. Uh, include symbols. Do, do, do. Include source. Hey Robert, how you doing? So I took my uh, UI testing library, and we are we are making we are nougatifying it. So repo lives here, and just because I'm uh, desperate to learn something. I'm playing with GitHub Actions. So the problem I'm currently facing is, doo -doo -doo, and let me just reopen this to make sure. That would be really embarrassing if I was looking at a stale, stale instance. Uh, doo -doo -doo, no, I am not. So the, the current problem I'm facing is, despite the fact that when this guy compiles, uh, he, he generates out both an XE uh, and a DLL, right? Ooh, yeah, let's clean this up. Just whack that real quick. Proof is in the pudding. Rebuild. I think that came across when I did my, my copy and paste. So he generates both a DLL and an XE, but only the DLL is being included in the NuGet package, and I actually need both. I actually need both in the NuGet package. I guess I technically don't need the exe in the lib directory, but I need it in the package. I could I could deal with it as part of the the build if we put it in the build folder, and I I could write a, a fancy little fun targets thing to go with it. That would work. I'd prefer not to, but that would that would be a fallback. So I was trying to figure out how to how to tie this guy together. Is a tool. I don't want to use a new spec if I don't have to. I've always gone back to the new spec files. I just don't want to do that. I shouldn't have to, right? Right? There should be output path something or another. Package path. Ooh, custom content target. Targets for target framework moniker, specific content and package. Your bot. My bot is stopping you? Oh, from typing too quick? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, build actions. The content folder. I'm not following Robert. I agree. I want to put it. So I, so the short version is I actually don't really care where the XE ends up, whether it goes inside the content folder, the inside the lib folder, or inside the build folder. I could make any of those work. I just need to know where it's going to end up. Get my package files. See, this is where, it, so advanced extension points for cre to create a custom package. This sounds like what I want. The pack target provides two extension points to run inner target framework specific builds. The extension points support including target framework specific content and assemblies into a package. Boy, that sounds like exactly what I want. Uh, use this for files inside the lib folder or folder specifying or folder specified using build output target folder. Sweet. So, targets for TFM specific output. This sounds like what I want. Write a custom target and specify it as the value. So I do this, okay. For any files that need to go in the build output Lib by default, the target should write those files into the item group. 
Uh, okay, so this is the magical item group that I need to add things into. Excellent. It wasn't going to be, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but at least I knew it had to be possible. It's not being sent. Oh, really? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Robert. I just saw the Hangout message. The bot is blocking nougat. Wow. Hang on, let me let me look. Uh, sorry, I gotta check. Filtering. I might have to check. I'm I'm thinking that's probably one that I added on um, Twitch, which means it's not showing up for me here, which is disappointing. Um, I will have to go and check that guy afterwards. Um, but yeah, I should unblock the word nougat. That doesn't seem like something that should have been on a blacklist ever. Um, for now, you can type in you. And I'll just know that that means nougat. <laughs> It'll be like typing in code. Okay, so we were going to do some fancy packaging stuff. So uh, this is coming down here. This is coming down here. Uh, we are going to... Uh, yeah, sure. We'll leave this property group down here. It's a, it's a little weird. I usually put my property groups above all my items group, but these ones are sort of specific uh so let's see so output path actually what i really want is the i think when i build like this uh let's see build events so this is my cheater way of looking up the the output variables so if you go to build events edit pre-build macros there's a wonderful list um and i'm and i want to know if this guy uh, see, that's what I was worried about. It's pointed to the DLL for the target path, even though it's XE generating. Hmm. Okay, well, but we can at least grab target dir. Yeah, target dir and then target name. The target dir and target name will get me, get me where I want to go. So this becomes... Target dir, like that. Target name dot exe. Boom. Uh, let's see. Target path. Don't think I care about that at all. I just really want you included so that I don't have to think too hard. Uh, let's see. Include exe in package. We'll put that up here. Boom. Uh, let's see. Content include. Yeah, and that works. So the only thing I didn't like about that solution, because that, that was um, on some of those other ones, there's also like the, uh, duh, duh, duh. where do we find it? There, there's options like this that people have pointed out as well, where you can set pack to true and then also the package path so that you can drop it in anywhere you want. The only thing I don't like about this is this now includes it as part of my Solution Explorer in Visual Studio, which in my case, because I'm actually looking to grab the built XE, feels really weird to have it included over here. Uh, let's see, you are apparently losing your mind. Reload project. I don't remember having this many problems with the CS proj, but I did just... I'm on a preview build and I did just rev. Don't know if it's bug. We'll chase it later. So it still builds. Uh, back to the terminal. We're going to test it here again. Pack. Pretty please. Okay. So we're going to close you down because I don't want to get confused. Go up a directory. Open the NuGet package. And I should see... Goal! <laughs> it works. 
Oh, it feels good to have it work. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So here's what we got to do next. Here's what we need to do. A uh, new project. Uh, let's see. Give me a unit test project. Sure. Uh, MS test sounds great. And we're going to do XAML test dot test because that will not confuse anyone. The trick to a good naming is to repeat similar looking words multiple times over to make it virtually impossible for me to remember how to type it a second time. It's also a great strategy for uh, passwords. Uh, in case that wasn't clear, I was joking on both. Please don't do that. Uh, okay, uh, so let's do let's do a simple test with this because what I would love to do, uh, let's see, manage NuGet packages, and what we're going to do is we're going to change and add up a source. So package source. SAML te uh, test debug, all right? And we are just going to come over here to my debug directory and say, you are now a package source. Poof, boom. And you should probably, huh? Oh, that's installed. Oh, I was very confused as to how those packages were showing up. Okay, so. I should be able to install you. Step one, does the NuGet package install? Uh, sure, that looks great. Resolve. Well, that's not a good sign. Build. Uh, okay. So what did what did we do wrong? Type or namespace Microsoft could not be found. Oh, oh shoot. Okay, hold on, hold on. Net core app three one. Okay, so Lang version eight dot Okay, so step one, make sure when you gen up a new project that you select the correct target framework moniker. Uh, otherwise, your world gets really weird really fast. Let's try this again. Uh, that sort of want to drop this reference real quick and just let's just verify we can build without it. Rebuild all succeeded. Right? We should have a single test. This test runs flawlessly. Right? Okay. Perfect. Certless test. Easy pass. Okay. Let's try that. Let's try that one more time. So manage NuGet package. Grab this guy. Let's try that one more time. I think I still had the window open so it didn't refresh. There we go. Okay. So you're all happy. Netcore app, I'm a Netcore app. Okay, so updates. Do you, hold on, before I get too carried away. Uh, okay, so let's just, let's rev these up to the latest before we get too flustered by this. We should probably rev them on the other package too, on the main one. Uh, but that can be a different problem. So now we go here. So wait, 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 wait. Build. Okay. Everyone's still happy. So browse. We're going to come back to our debug source. Uh, we go here. Install. Microsoft Netcore Platforms. It is interesting to me that it's revving that one up. This one, this reference here is confusing me. Um, and let me, let me just... Netcore App 3.1. I did this correct, didn't I? Copy... Uh, 
It did not appear to change. Okay. I'm... I will stand corrected then. Go ahead and install. Predefined object not defined. Uh, does not contain a constructor that takes zero arguments. Rebuild. I'm wondering if part of the problem, I wonder if it's trying to reference the exe because it's in the lib directory. I wonder if that's the kicker. Yeah, it's trying to reference both. Dang it. Okay, so we aren't going to be able to do that. Okay, okay, we can, we can fix this. We can fix this. So get rid of you. So you go back to being in a happy place. Uh, let's just, let's just while we're, while we're in here, are there any updates? Okay, so you're updated. Um, the, this guy here, so let's go back to the docs. I believe doo -doo -doo, there was something about, nope, not that doc page. This one. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, so let's see. Uh, you've worked with WPF from a cert? Uh, yes, I have. I have done quite a bit with WPF. Uh, let's see here. So target framework. Content and package. Uh, worst mistake of my life. What was uh, uh, started to lag? So I will say this: there, there's a there's a few things with WPF where where you can certainly get yourself into a, a bit of a problem. Um, a lot of times people um, sell XAML as oh it's this great thing and it's so easy. Um, there, I usually warn people when I when I teach WPF that there is a a steep learning curve. Uh, so I guess the question is what? So usually when lagginess occurs, um, it's almost always related to threading. Um, uh, because it's very easy to mess it up and have your your UI thread working. Other frameworks, and I and I, I don't know, I don't know about Qt specifically, but other frameworks oftentimes are are better about pushing work onto um, background threads to keep the app responsive. Like I know a lot of times the way Electron is set up, it tends to do that so that the app always remains responsive, whereas WPF by default shoots you in the foot. Um, and if you do something on, say, like a button click event, um, your app's going to be hung for the whole time while it's um, uh, seriously did work on the rendering thread. I don't know, but I know that that's where, where usually people get, bit, get hung by it. Because you're saying 500 meg for, for usage. The, the WPF footprint should be significantly smaller than that. Uh, so I guess the question is how much of that was WPF and how much of that was the, the main app? I did use a lot of styling. Was it, was it your own custom styling or was it third-party libraries? Because I also run like the uh, material design and XAML library and it adds quite a bit. Everything was custom. Okay. I guess then I, it would it would somewhat depend on exactly what you're doing because yeah it is very possible to easily get up to several hundred meg worth of stuff. Um, uh, it had CSS built in, so I guess what was what was the motivation for going to Qt then? Custom content target. Uh, I should write those into the item group. Uh, 
uh, but it was C++. Yeah, well, I, I won't disagree with that on C++. Um, the other thing too, uh, so it is worth noting, WPF does have some, and I will, I will put this in quotes, some known performance problems, um, but none, nothing that can't be um, easily overcome. Like for example, large portions of Visual Studio um, itself are still WPF components. Now, Visual Studio is not a WPF app, but it's uh, very pluggable back and forth. Um, simple fade transition was bringing the app to a halt. That surprises me. Um, that sounds like there was layout passes occurring in addition to the rendering. Because in general, if uh, like simple render transforms that modify things like um, opacity to make something fade in and out should be fairly smooth. Um, but if there's, uh, because WPF does have two effectively transforms, one does layout passes, which causes the whole tree to lay out every time. And if something like that is happening, then yeah, it'll it'll lag insane. Um, but XAML was killing me. I wanted to ship something quick. Yeah, and like I said at the beginning, Z I usually tell people XAML has a steep learning curve. People a lot of times want to bill it as the the greatest thing since sliced bread, even with the newer XAML frameworks for like WinUI 3 or Maui or um, Xamarin Forms, which is now becoming Maui. Um, like some people really, really like XAML and it's definitely my preference, but I don't, I don't believe XAML is an easy thing to do. Um, so I will say there's been several, I guess, major improvements with WPF. So one is it's, you can now run WPF on top of .NET Core. Um, so not necessarily that WPF got a lot of major improvements, but .NET Core has some serious performance improvements over um, .NET Framework. Um, so you'll get that, um, and actually, .NET blog the and .NET five that's uh, do, 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 let me f hang on there was a blog post posted not two days ago where is that link I have it in here uh, do, 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 do. there is with the performance benchmarks uh, where is that link at uh, let's see, do, do, do. dev IQ, yeah, it's right, oh, come on, where is it, there it is, this, this is the guy, so if you want a really, really long read on all of the performance improvements coming in .NET 5, that's way, like, this, because uh, this just came out, uh, let's see, on the 13th, um, and so just outlining some of the performance improvements. So WPF gets this implicitly because it's built on top of uh, .NET Core and what will be .NET 5. So it'll get a lot of performance improvements just by virtue of the framework and, and the fact that it can run on the newer frameworks. Um, the rendering stack improvements are not likely to fully be there. Um, they've been working on decoupling it from some of the um, DirectX stuff which is how they've gotten the .NET Core um, running. Uh, and that, and usually when people get to, to the fine grade rendering on WPF um, and you start looking at the DirectX calls, that's where a lot of the uh, quote unquote performance problems are. Uh, and to some degree, it's because of the layout for the XAML that WPF supports. Um, they, they fixed it with UWP um, and again, what is now becoming WinUI, uh, because they took away some of the XAML features that allowed people to really kill their performance, and said, "No, no, no, we're not gonna, we're gonna make it performant by default, and you're gonna have to work hard if you want to make it go slow." Um, so there, the what is now coming in WinUI three or UWP doesn't have those same rendering performances. But again, if you were seeing something with just like opacity changes killing your performance. Again, I'd probably have to look closer at, at the app, but I, it sounds like there was potentially layout passes that were occurring in addition to the rendering. That would be my first guess.
But yeah, for anybody who wants a really long read on performance and everything in .NET 5, uh, Stephen's article is very in-depth, and some of the performance numbers and metrics in .NET 5 are absolutely ri ridiculous. You'll note he starts off by saying, I'll highlight just, just 250 pull requests uh, without the things working in the background. Yeah, and if it and if it wasn't tied to like the extra C sharp code running, um, I would imagine that it would have to be something with um, either the styles or or like I said, if there were layout passes that were occurring um, on top of it, because most of the time WPF should be fairly fast, and um, it also depends on how far back we're talking to, um, because if it was before like .NET Framework 4.5.2. I won't say I have a lot of experience in that regard. I think when I started WPF, it was in that range. And so stuff prior to that, um, I didn't do, I was doing WinForms development, not WPF. So I'm sorry, Windows Forms. Uh, okay. So I think this is, I think we're going to switch to this. So lots, lots of talking, but I think, I think this is, whoa, 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 whoa. No, go back, go back. I just wanted to copy and paste. Clearly hit the wrong key. Um, ba -ba -ba. So we are going to change this to this. Because I don't want it to end up in the lib directory. Uh, we're going to go there. And then how how do I work? Build out. Uh, that's not it. This guy. Um, I'm curious where this is going to end up. It seems to indicate that package path lets me put it where I want. So... We're going to try it. We're going to test that theory. Because if that's true, that solves all of my problems. Uh, let's see. So that goes there. And which you are going to be this guy. And we are going to put you in build. Just straight up build. I think that works. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Package it up. Doo, doo, doo. Let's see if that goes where I want it to. Because I would really like to see a build directory. Oh! <laughs> Perfect! That'll do. That'll do. Okay, uh, and the reason I'm saying that is because inside of a NuGet package, the build directory is one of the special ones. Um, you can put effectively things that need to be done as part of the build in here. So the other thing you can add in here is your own custom MS build targets files that will get run whenever your NuGet package is referenced, which means I can do whatever I please with this file at that point. And I please to copy it to the output directory. <laughs> perfect, 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 perfect. So, uh, the magical incantation to do this, uh, we're going to do a new folder, and I'm just going to put this inside of a build directory so I don't have to think about it too much. Uh, let's see, new item. Um, the one thing that, that does matter is the name of the file must be nuget package ID dot targets or dot props, otherwise it won't get picked up. So you can have more than one targets file or more than one props file, um, but if you but the uh, but your entry point has to be the one that matches your NuGet package ID, and then you can reference whatever you want. Uh, so XAML test dot targets, boom, and that is not even close to what we want. Okay, so if I recall correctly, I have a sample of this living out on one of my other repos. So I'm just going to go and steal code for myself. Uh, also, this is what the app looked like. Let's take a... Well, that's pretty cool. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think too much, though I will say there is... Um, the 
I, I'd be curious, like the so the first thing I note is something like this with like the blur. Um, I know this is one of those areas where um, typically to get this type of effect inside of WPF, people have to go down to um, what is the term? You can do effectively your own rendering uh, bitmap effects, um, and to get this type of behavior in WPF is actually really really hard. Um, the basic opacity with like this news section that doesn't seem too difficult. Uh, it's done on the server. It's baked into the image. Oh, well, shoot! If that's just an image, then that shouldn't be. This shouldn't be too much for it to handle at all. Um, I, the other thing I notice is the custom Windows Chrome, which that can be another point of areas where things get fairly difficult. Um, I usually tell people to look at my apps whenever they want to do custom windows because the the custom Chrome gets hard. Uh, let's see. Then it would transition between backdrops of the other items. Got it. So like as you hover over, you know, Left for Dead, the Left for Dead image pulls up and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, it'd be in, it'd be interesting to go through and look at the XAML and see about it and see why it was slow um, again the other thing is depending on how old it is there there could have just been a I drop it on the latest stuff and it works fine um, or even the perform I, I'd be also curious to look at the um, inside of Visual Studio there's performance counters built in um, and I'd be curious what it would what it would say is the the slow point because that would be another interesting part Fairly cool looking app. Was this for some sort of like launcher program or because it looks like what I would expect from like, you know, Steam's client or similar, right? Uh, launcher, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so this guy here has is a secure launch product. Ah, I got you. Sweet. Uh, okay, so this is what I mean by you can have your own targets file. Um, and I am just going to blind steal all of my code because it's not plagiarism if you steal from yourself. Uh, paste. Uh, let's see, and if I close and relaunch, there we go. Now it should be happy about this. Okay. So a couple, couple key things inside of these targets files. So there's a, there's a magical property that you get when you're a targets file that's launched via NuGet package. Uh, this MS build, this file directory will give you the path into where you are located. So you don't have to worry about if the users change their NuGet storage directory, if you're in the temp, if you're loaded with old CS proj, new CS proj, package config or not, it's all that jazz. You just reference the variable and you can find yourself. So the key part to note here is that our exe is going to be in this directory with this name, which means I now know where to find him, which works great. So let's see, do I need any of this stuff? I think I'm going to get rid of most of this. Uh, we don't need a task. Uh, let's see here. And I think I think what we can do is just, we can effectively do similar to what we had uh, in the project before where I was copying to the output directory, uh, where I deleted that. Do, do, do. Here, right? Oh, come on, give me, get cracking, you are a pain. I want to highlight this text. Pretty sure it lets you copy and paste. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, let's see here. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get cracking. You are killing me, get cracking. You are killing me. Okay, so we are going to go and we'll test, and I'll just grab it off my own history. Let's back that up. That's a little big. Pull this back. Let's pull this back. Let's see. History. 
Sure, you'll do. See, look, copy, paste. It's not a hard operation, get cracking. See that? See that? Copy, paste. Take notes. It should be an easy operation. Uh, let's see. So, we will do this. Uh, copy items. I think what we're going to do is declare it here. Something about XAML test extra outputs. Boom. Uh, we'll do that. We're not going to condition or any of that fancy stuff. Uh, you end with a trailing slash, so we're just going to go star dot exe. I'm going to pick all of you guys up. No longer need you in the item group. Uh, let's see, how about copy, XAML, test, extra outputs. That sounds better. Destination folder. I believe what we said before is this just becomes target dir. And then we don't need any of this jazz. Perfect. So all that goes away, all that goes away, all that goes away. Now, I want to look real quick. You're set to none. Perfect. Uh, so cheater mode, if you want to get it in your CS proj and you're using the new project format, just add something like that. And it picks it up, which is great. And I don't have to think about it, um, but I don't actually care about the copied output directory. What I really want to do is this guy, I want to abuse that uh, packable. Right? Uh, this is the animation if you're curious. Really? That's all, huh? Yeah, I guess I, I would, I'd have to go through and look at it because I, there's nothing there There's nothing there that I would see as being problematic at all. That should be very simple. I mean, I am noticing on the list there's a there's a like there's some there's some nice little fade animations on like the mouse over for the text and the background. It looks like it's swapping, or at least uh, some level of opacity is changing there. But yeah, that I. I'm a little surprised that that would cause that many problems. I'd, I'd probably have to take a look at it. So for reference, uh, in my day job, one of the projects that I work on is actually um, some software that's used for forensic video analysis. And it is a WPF app. And so we end up having to do all kinds of fancy stuff for um, effectively playing back video. Um, and doing image transformations and anything less than 30 frames a second is unacceptable. Um, so thing, things of that nature. And so I know that level of performance is, is attainable, but I, I'm also aware of um, it doesn't necessarily come out of the box if you just write XAML. <laughs> so that, that is worth noting as well, is there, are, there can be some significant um, rendering hiccups to get that level of performance. Where was I? Where was I? I, I was looking for that, that stack overflow. Uh, package path and pack. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want you to go there and I want you to end up in build. Yeah, I used to do the blurring in real time but then I realized it'd save me time if I baked it. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, that sort of blur effect, I, I know that's one of the areas of WPF that um, is not trivial to implement. Specifically when UWP came out for like Windows 8 and they added the new uh, material stuff, um, what did they call it? Acrylic, where it's not really a blur, but it kind of looks like a blur. Um, people asked for that in WinForms and WPF, and the answer was, 
dear heavens, no. Um, they had other words, but that was that was what it boiled down to. Essentially, the rendering stack on those platforms wasn't going to be able to handle it. They needed the the newer, fancier, fancier rendering, whatever was going into that. Uh, at least one target was filed and build uh, builds them. Huh? I am confused. Uh, let's. Okay, well, let's see what it generated. Let's see what you generated. Show me the package. Oh, uh, that is, that is, oh, I got gotcha. you. So it was, oh, it was smart about it because I, uh, uh, got it. That is not what we want. Uh, you are package path. Hmm, I'm tempted to just do this. I'm tempted to just handle it down here and not even stress stress about it up here since I'm already. Uh, let's see. Project or uh, let's see, uh, it'll be build and slash. Uh, just pick them all up. Uh, what are you unhappy about? Miss that. Clean that. That 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 that. And then I don't need to do anything with you. You can just live there. Okay, let's try this one more time. It turns out the warning's useful. Oh, no warning. That gives me hope. That gives me hope. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, you are clearly unhappy with all of the stuff I've just edited. I appreciate that the new project files let you edit in real time, but sometimes it does just fall over on its face. Uh, yeah, I understand it. You're unhappy. Okay, so now we add NuGet package here. Manage NuGet package. Oh boy, I just realized how late it is. Not to self, this is about a half hour longer than I was planning on going. Uh oh, it loaded from cache, didn't it? It did. Bad cache. Bad caching. Uh, bu -bu -bum. What? Why did it make me accept a license to uninstall the thing? Uh, let's see. I need to go grab. So the uh, for anybody doing this yourself, because I'm reusing the um, the same version number. It's not re-downloading it because it sees that it's already in the cache, which in general is a good thing because NuGet packages are expected to be stable. So once you have version 001, shouldn't be changing on you. Okay, so that's better. Makes me feel a little bit a little bit better that it's no longer referencing the XE and the DLL. Build succeeded. That's even better. Let's go and look at its output because if that ideally been debug, let's get rid of that net five before I get confused. Uh, let's see. And there's the XE in the output directory. That's what we wanted. That is what we wanted. Okay, so let's just do a quick, let's gen up a quick test um, and make sure, because we, sh we should have it. We should actually have some tests over this. So let's see. So the key bit is something akin to this to lead. Uh, so var app and 
Let's see. Sample test. Okay. Start remote. That'll start. That'll start it. Uh, I do need to call then init. And to do. I think we can get away with this. Boom. So initialize. We don't need any of this jazz. We don't need any of this jazz. That's just an empty string. And you need to be, let's see, async task because we're going to use, we're going to push this out. Uh, let's see, grab reflection, get the current assembly location. Yeah. Uh, let's see, app. window this is actually expecting the full XAML for the window which is unfortunately ugly but we don't need anything honestly we can just stop here if this if this launches this will be more than sufficient to prove that it works uh, let's see, so whack the material design stuff, leave the defaults, all the prettiness goes away, uh, launch with center screen, duh, duh. empty window sounds great to me, string XAML, let's see, uh, XAML, Let's see, wait, test, delay, time span from seconds. I'm only doing this so that I have time to actually see it and appreciate it working before it dies a horrible death. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. That was the intent is to make it simple. So... Let's just run it. Let's just run it. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, so there's that. Right. This is expected. No. Um, and so that's the rest of that's going to fail out here in a moment. So it is unhappy because I did not include the runtime JSON. Yuck. The problem being that you don't actually need the runtime JSON. So here's here's the the, the crux of the problem, um, and we're gonna we're gonna test this in a very manual manner in just a moment. But when you compile a .NET Core um, app, um, unless you do a publish. It needs to know something about its runtime configuration, hence these methods, uh, like this JSON file down here, right? So it's expecting to find something that looks like this, where it matches, so that it knows the runtime to use. Um, now, if you do the the publish of the app, you can get that stuff baked in, um, and then you don't have to worry about moving multiple files around. You can have a nice standalone exe, which is ultimately what we want. Um, but the XE I copied in was not one that was published. It was just from the output directory. Less, less good. Less good. We'll have to do a published one. Um, but in the interest of testing this, what I can do is I can just come around here and go and grab his runtime config, and I can just put it into the other directory. just to prove that this thing works. Oh, stop your running. I'm actually a little surprised that that's still, oh, there's no way that it's still running because the guy died out. So run again. Okay, test failed, that's exciting. Uh, let's see, 
root element is missing, XAML parse exception, um, guessing, app initialize. So this string here, it's unhappy about resource dictionary. Should probably have some defaults in there to make that cleaner. Because I shouldn't have to specify that every time. Especially on apps where I don't care. So there is room for improvement. There's a reason the version of this library starting at 001. Uh, no, unable to copy file, probably because it's now running and it hasn't been cleaned up. See, this is why you don't hack, hack and cobble stuff together. Uh, let's see, so you are probably... Those are the test consoles. Sort of anticipated seeing it right in front of me, but let's go down to... There you are. That probably falls into the case of making sure that it's cleaned up. Error loading application resources. Cannot create unknown type resource dictionary. Oh, come on. Come on. I know it's hard, but... Um, oh, right. I can't just do resource dictionary. I have to give it the namespace declarations. Ugh, ugh. This is why I got to clean this up because this is a pain to type. And it did it leave the process running again? No, it killed it. Excellent. As it should have. Come on, buddy. Build started. Uh, right after I said it didn't leave the process running, and the process is clearly still running. Oh, and it's nested in here. Fantastic. Yeah, there's a few things around, especially this process starting that needs to be cleaned up. Um, I do want to get it using jobs. Oof. <gasps> Um, it is. It does bother me that I that the test completed um, and it did not clean this up. Oh, probably because of that. That's what is almost assuredly leaving this running. Um, the fact that I did that and did not appropriately clean up my stuff, which means there's probably another running one down here now because. Yep. Okay. But the short version is it creates a window, it launches, it works, we're happy. Okay. So uh, let's see. Getting uh, .NET pack, building a basic NuGet package. Okay. I think that's probably where I'm going to have to call it tonight since it is almost midnight here. Um, I will circle back around with the GitHub actions at another point. Um, I may poke at it a little bit. Um, if anybody's interested, well, I'm sure I'll probably be doing a little bit more of this on my regular stream on Thursday night. So, uh, so depending on where you are, either one or two days away. But thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Always fun to talk and chat and watch me struggle a little bit. So with that, I'm going to say happy coding. Have a good night. I trust that most of you, it's probably late. Robert, I know it's it's way past yours. Magnus, you have a good day. I know your time zone's off me like 10 hours, something like that. So have a good one. We will hopefully see people uh, in another day or two. Talk to you later. Happy coding.